Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our regular daily NBA show that we've been doing with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com, successful professional handicapper for uh, 30 years, who gives us uh, his thoughts on any game I ask him about in the NBA each day. Right now it is uh, Friday, March 13th. Joe Duffy, thanks for being back with us. Thank you for having me, Peter. All right, we got nine games on the card tonight. Uh, a lot I want to ask you about. The first thing I want to ask you about, you know, Atlanta off of a, off of a loss, and the last time this happened, they were off of their loss uh, against Philadelphia. I suspected they'd be a good bet, even as a big favorite, in their next game. Uh, that was my lean. I didn't have the balls, though, to make it an official pick. Here they are again, though, off of a loss. Are they going to bounce back as a six-point uh, road favorite at Phoenix? Yeah, that is certainly um, the Hawks have definitely been resilient. Like I said, they struggled a little bit before the All-Star break, and I think they lost their first game out of the All-Star break. Even I was wondering if they were regressing to the mean, but they have shown that they are certainly for real, obviously, the line has gone up. It opened at five, and I now see it's six and a half in some areas. So if you caught it early, it was a good bet. I do know that it is the single biggest public play mm. so far today, 81% of the public betting on Atlanta. But at the original line, certainly was a pretty good play. Then another uh, line that's looking interesting is uh, Sacramento Philly. Sacramento, of course, new coach George Carl, and they're seven and one over under in their last eight. Even Philly is seven and uh, four over under in their last 11. Total open to 202 and a half at Pinnacle. I would have loved that. Now it's 206 and a half, but maybe uh, even at 206 and a half, it's uh, worth a shot. What do you think? Is that line too high? The Sixers, they're better defensively than offensively, but yeah, the way that Sacramento has been going over lately, I would certainly have to, to lean strongly towards the over because it's not just about over, but it's about the margin. And, you know, for their last four games by a combined 91 points, the odds makers are clearly well behind them as far as the totals concerned. And then another one that's a little interesting, Miami and Toronto, right? Toronto has not been doing well. They're 2-8 and eight against spread over the last time. They're coming off a loss, but... In my research, I read that uh, Kyle Lowry, all-star guard, of course, went on a profanity-laced tirade after the uh, last loss. And anytime I see players going on profanity-laced tirades, I'm always thinking maybe they're a good bet in their next game. Maybe they'll be angry and hyper-focused. They're a five-point home favorite against Miami, though. Miami, they've actually been holding their own against spread, four and two against spread over the last six. I agree with what you said. Sometimes teams need some type of wake-up call, and that's why I say that when a team fires a coach in the mid season they it almost always works short term and yes when you read about a a team having a team meeting this is especially true in baseball yeah. when they're in the middle of the summer etc that yeah they do need a, some type of a wake up call and literally Somebody just opening a can of whoop ass in the locker room is the type of thing that teams can rally around, and it's it's tough to argue with that. They've been very offensively efficient, third best offensive efficiency, 107.8 points per 100 possessions on the season. But they've been playing terrible defensively. Their last four games, they're allowing 116.1 points per 100 possessions, which is absolutely terrible. So. We'll see if uh, Toronto can play with more intensity, and your your reasoning is something that I agree with. It's one of those quote unquote intangible things that I do look for. Do you have a lean as of right now on this on this spread, or is are you still feeling it out? Yeah, I would say you know, and we'll probably discuss that. I actually do have a free pick on the total, but oh. as far as spread wise, I would tend to agree with you again. I'm not huge in the trends, but I like to pass along something where it's statistically dominant. And the Heat are three twenty and one off of a win recently so uh, they you know they've been having some letdown as we know with they've had guys in and out of the lineup but you can understand how they've been as I like to say consistently inconsistent so uh, I would probably lean towards Toronto not only uh, for the reasons you said but this is a situation where Miami tends to come out flat okay well we will get to uh, the free picks in part two in a second first I just want to ask about Golden State Denver you know Denver's been doing well with their new coach uh, recently and Golden State has been a big a huge under trender in fact despite being a very high scoring team recently but this game has a high total it's also so uh, the market is very uncertain. 216 and a half, 217 or 217 and a half are all widely available. And Denver has sort of been, uh, you know, they've been using their bench a lot more, keeping fresher legs and pushing the pace a lot more uh, recently. And, uh, you know, they went to 214 against Houston, 217 against Atlanta. So even though Golden State has been a huge undertrender recently, I'm thinking this might not be a game, even though there's a high total where, where you'd want to uh, go that way. And maybe this one actually might be a good bet on the over. It's, it's, I'm probably going to pass on this total for sure because there's too many uncertainties, but it's an interesting handicapping situation. What's your take on the total here? 
Well, as you said, it is a very high total, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't get. I say time and time again, sometimes my best systems are what may seem counterintuitive at first, but in the case of Golden State, look, they're such an up-tempo team that for their games to go over the total, they got to maintain that tempo with this ridiculously high total. Keep in mind, you know, with the thin air of Denver, the, the high altitude, that this might not be the best situation for Golden State to, to run. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think they're all of a sudden going to say, hey, we're playing in the thin air. Let's go to a, a big half-court game. But I don't have a strong opinion on the total either way. But, you know, as you said, once the total starts getting up this high, yeah. you have to lean towards the under. Okay, thanks so much for your thoughts on the card. Now let's get to part two, Joe Duffy, the free picks.